Welcome everyone. I'm Pastor Megan Torgerson. Preaching for us today is Deacon Hunts Vigisa, and we continue in our series, Grow in Faith. It's good to be in worship with you today. A special welcome today in our worship to Pastors Gary and Mary Sue Dreyer. They will be with us in worship more this month. You'll see them leading worship, hear them preaching, you'll get pastoral care for them. I'm, I'm just so grateful to have them here with us at Easter in the month of August. Now, starting next month in September, we will have our new and settled interims. They will be with us throughout the remainder of our call processes. So please keep them and our call committee close in your prayers as this process continues. There are other wonderful things going on here at Easter Lutheran Church, and I hope you can be a part of them. First, Easter members can join a sacred sites tour with Pastor Jim Bear Jacobs on August 28th. It is a really unique and powerful opportunity to learn more about Native American people and culture here in the Twin Cities. So you can learn more or sign up at easter.org slash justice. Spaces are limited. Also coming up soon is Fair for All. That is actually coming up this Tuesday from 3.30 to 5.30 at the Lake location. Fair for All allows for the purchase of groceries at reduced prices. It's open to everyone. Also, we do need a few Easter people to help make that incredible event possible. So you can go to easter.org slash local partnerships to hear more about Fair for All or to sign up to volunteer for the event. Now, Easter adults, you are absolutely going to want to join other Easter people as well as friends of ours from Prince of Peace or Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Churches for an incredible adult retreat at Camp WAPO from September 19th through 21st. This is a really special and lovely event. You don't want to miss it. So go to easter.org slash adult 55. You can find a brochure there and more information on this event. Now, also coming up this fall, Easter is going to begin a new adult respite program in partnership with DARTS. This program is going to provide care for adults with a variety of needs so that their caregivers can take some time to care for themselves. Your loving and devoted presence as a volunteer in this program is going to make it happen. So to learn more about how you can help support and be a part of this program, you can go to easter.org care. Friends, there's so much happening. There are so many good things going on and so many ways you can be a part of it. It is good to be a community that worships together today. I celebrate the many ways we live out our faith. And so we begin our worship together here now in the presence of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. scaled all the highest mountains and I've stood at the edge of their peaks but I still couldn't see to the edge of your love for me and I walked on the wildest waters and I've sung to the depths of the still couldn't fathom the depths of your love for me. Canyons wide, oceans deep.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, from you come all good and true acts of faith. Give to us all the peace that comes with following your word as we live in your truth. Keep us from all that would pull us away from you and your way of love, so we may live in grace and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oh, hey, how are you guys doing today? It is good to be with you. Right now, it is a beautiful, bright, sunny day. It is. It looks gorgeous outside, um, but I'm happy to be here with you. Hey, I'm going to read you a story from our Spark Bible. Um, this is our text for today, and this is called Many Members. I'll show you. Many Members, One Body. Apostles like Paul stayed very busy telling as many people as possible about Jesus and about his love for them. Sometimes Paul traveled to share the good news in person. Sometimes he sent letters to teach his friends more about what it means to be Christian. Together, they were a part of the new family of people who believed in Jesus. Paul wrote this message to Christians who lived in the city of Corinth. He wanted to help them understand how special the church was, including everyone, everyone in it. The church is like the human body. One body has many parts, but it is still one body. We are many different kinds of people, but we are still one body of believers. If a foot said, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. Well, that would be silly. It would still be part of the body. And if the whole body said, said, we're just an eye, how could it hear? Or how could it smell? That's silly too. God made our bodies to have lots of parts. And each part has something special to do. God made all of our parts to work together. The body of believers is the same. The body of believers is you and me. God has given each of you special things to do. Some of you travel to share the news about Jesus, and some of you teach right where you live. Some of you heal the sick. Some of you become church leaders. Is everyone a teacher? Is everyone a leader? No, that would be silly too. God made us to be different and to do things to show our love for Jesus. Just like the different parts of one body, we all have different talents, and we all can work together. God has made each of us very special. And that is a story, and that story is most certainly true. Hey, here's one thing I'd love for you to do as you come to know that you are the body of Christ, that you are important to the body of Christ, that you matter to the body of Christ. One of the ways that we are the body of Christ is we serve other people. We do things that are helpful for them because we can, because we have that talent, or we have that ability, or we have the time. 
So here's what I'd like you to do. This is the big challenge. I don't know how this is going to go, but I trust you. I want you to pause the video right now and then act out a way that you could serve your neighbor, a way that you could serve somebody. So don't say any words. Just act it out. Use your motions. Pretend to have maybe a hammer or pretend to rake or pretend to mow and see if the other people in your family can guess what how you are serving and what you are doing. Give it a shot. It's one way that we can be the body of Christ. Will you pray with me? Hey God, thank you for giving us the opportunities to serve. Thank you for helping us understand that we are together, that we are brothers and sisters in Christ, united by our, united by our baptism. And thank you, God, for loving us so much. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It is so good to be with you. See you later. The reading for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. If one member suffers, all members suffer what together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Well, hello, Easter. Uh, thank you for joining us on our online worship today. Whatever day that happens to be, whatever time that happens to be, I'm thankful that you have found us and that you are worshiping with us this, this day. Uh, my name is Hans Vigasa, and I'm the youth minister here at Easter. And we are currently in a sermon series called Grow in Faith, and we are looking at faith practices. And today, we, uh, as you've already heard, we've got this kind of great and hopefully well-known uh, text from 1 Corinthians, uh, exploring what does it mean, what does it look like to be the body of Christ? One of the questions that I've been asking as I've been reading this and reflecting on this is, what, what would Paul say today? What would Paul need to address in our congregations, or even our congregation, um, about what we need to, how we need to become the body of Christ? Before we maybe answer that question or ponder too deeply, uh, there's a couple things we need to know about um, these verses. Uh, the first is that Corinthians um, is a letter. It was correspondence between the Apostle Paul and the church in Corinth. He is writing to a church that he started. And this church, this letter is being written because this church is, is going through multiple things, having multiple issues, is, is in conflict, and things are getting messy. So Paul hears what is happening to his beloved church and writes to them to help them understand who they are, and more importantly, who they are together. And to really unpack this section of, of 1 Corinthians 12, we need to back up a little bit and look at the 11 verses before our verse today. Um, 
Because in those 11 verses, Paul sent, spends some time talking about spiritual gifts. There seemed to be much debate, uh, much concern, much hubris about spiritual gifts and which ones mattered, which ones were the most important. Uh, kind of a, a hierarchy of spiritual gifts had been established. And Paul acknowledges that there are many spiritual gifts uh, and not everyone has all of them. No one has all of them. Um, each of us is uniquely gifted. But the most important thing to know and to remember and to understand about the spiritual gifts, about these spiritual gifts, is that the Holy Spirit that invites you into faith, that welcomes you into faith, welcomes you into relationship with God, which is also a gift, that the Holy Spirit gives you these gifts. These gifts are acts of grace. These gifts are acts of love. That is the most important thing to remember. So it seems that these gifts had caused this church to put a hierarchy on gifts and it caused division within the church. Paul strikes this notion down and invites the church to think differently about themselves and about their roles. These gifts that were freely given are given for the common good. They're given, given for the benefit of the community, not you, not you at all, but for everyone. It's not about which one is better or which one is more important. These aren't superhero powers. These are Holy Spirit gifts. So now Paul shifts um, some of the imagery, some of the illustration to one of the human body. And he quite skillfully shows how everything matters, how everything is important, how everything has a job and a responsibility, and that the body isn't whole if a piece is missing, if part of it is missing. So he says, if the body were only an eye, like Mike from Monsters, Inc., how would the body hear? And if the the foot were to say to the hand, because I, or the, if the foot were to look at the hand and say, well, because I'm not a hand, I don't matter. Or if the eye were to say to the hand, I have no need of you because I am an eye. Or the head were to look at the foot and say, we don't need you because I am the head and I am the most important. Paul says this is nonsense. This is not important. In fact, he says that some of the parts that seem the most, uh, or that seem dispensable, or that seem weak, are actually the most indispensable. Paul says there are many members, there are many parts, but there's only one body. Okay, that makes sense. There are many parts to the body. The body needs many parts. Everything has their job. Every job is important. We get that. But is there more? Is there something else? Well, in fact, there is. Otherwise, we'd be praying right now. And this would be one of my shortest sermons ever. Corinth was a large port city west of Athens in Greece. It was in the heart of the Roman Empire. So it was influenced by Roman governance, Roman ideology, Roman philosophy, etc. And those in the church following the lead of Rome felt that if they have important gifts or gifts that were mattered or the best gifts, then maybe they should have a different role or a more important role following the lead of the Roman government. So they decided, well, if I have these gifts, I must have more responsibility. If I have more responsibility, I'm going to need to have more power. I'm going to need to have more authority. That's how the government was run. Shouldn't the church follow the government? So under this logic and following the example of the empire, the conclusion was, if I have greater gifts, I should be in charge or have preference over those folks who have lesser gifts. That just made sense. That's what happened in their communities. Their communities were full of divisions, of classes, of those with status, um, 
of economic differences, of racial differences, of gender differences, of age differences. This was the reality. This was the structure of life. Status mattered. Position mattered. Occupation mattered. They helped define who you were. They helped define your lot in life. Well, Paul rebukes all of this. Paul demands that a paradigm be shift. Paul, in effect, says that may be Caesar's plan, but that is not God's plan. So Paul starts by stressing to this church that they are, in fact, bound together. And they have a common origin that links them together. And that is that they were all baptized into one body. Despite the diversity of their their economics, their status, their position, their race, their spiritual gifts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you, Paul says, are bound together. You are bound in one spirit. You are bound in one body. You are bound to Christ Jesus. And even this diversity, even all of this diversity is a strength. Your baptism binds you together. Your diversity strengthens you. The diversity is necessary for a flourishing church, for a healthy community. So if you go back to my first question of what would Paul write about as some of our issues, some of our divisions, some of the things that we lament over, some of the things that we fight over, what do you think Paul would say? What would Paul write about? How would Paul address us today? I think these are challenging. Scholar Brian Peterson comments that diversity helps us to keep asking and to keep dialoguing about what God's will actually is. He calls diversity holy. He calls diversity something that pulls us out of complacency. So here's the other subtle, remarkable point about what Paul is saying. This unity of the church. This is the way that, that Christ is made visible. For some reason, this is God's plan. God invites you to be a part of it, of this diverse, linked church. Pastor Stan Mast remarks, the only body that Christ has in this world is the church. You, a plural you, is how God makes God self known in the world. And that is terrifying. It is remarkable. And it is a glorious calling that we were invited to be a part of this. The greatest gift that you can give the church and give the world is you because no one else can do that. There's a pastor who went to a church conference some time ago and he saw something that completely caught him off guard. Uh, there's a young man walking towards him that very boldly on his t-shirt said, I do not go to church. You're at a church conference and your t-shirt says you don't go to church? That's pretty bold. That's pretty, pretty blazing. Well, the pastor was about to ask him, about to confront him about his t-shirt and why he was even there. And as this man passed him, conviction stopped this pastor. Because in the back of his shirt, it said, I am the church. Do you see the implication? When we go places, we consume. We make transactions. We take. We go to the grocery store. We go to movies. We go to restaurants. The pastor remarked about this. He said, the church is not a place to go. It is a people on the go. The church is what I am. I am a part of the body of Christ. But Paul tries to show the church in Corinth and the church in Egan is that we are bound to each other. 
We are brought and bound together in baptism. And all of us, all of us have gifts. The gifts that we have, including the gifts of faith, are exactly those. They are gifts. They're gifts given by the Spirit. They're gifts that are given freely. They are gifts of grace. These are gifts that are earned. They're not deserved. They're gifts that are meant to be used. They're gifts that are meant to be shared. They are gifts that are meant for community. They are gifts that are meant to serve each other. And finally, Paul again disrupts the norms when he writes, when one member suffers, we all suffer. When one member is honored, we all rejoice. The body parts have a real concern for each other, joining together in suffering, celebrating with each other when joy is experienced. This was not the practice of the day. And at the very least, it is probably challenging to this day. Paul makes known the interdependence that we have with each other, the need for interdependence, not dependence, not independence, but interdependence. The church is one in which community is formed, a place where diversity is celebrated, if not required. Now go and be.
part of being a community together is, is sharing what we have, our time, our love, our presence, and our financial gifts. Together, we make this community whole and strong and, and part of God's mission right here in Egan, Minnesota. Thank you for the gifts that you share with this congregation and with God's mission here in this church. join me in the offering prayer. God of abundance, we bring before you all these gifts that you have first shared with us. With these blessings, we also offer our time, our talents, and ourselves. Strengthen us as we care for all those in need. In the name of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Celebrating the relationship we have with our God, with each other, and with all the saints on earth and in heaven, we pray for the sake of God's mission in the world and for our own lives. Let us pray. We praise you, God, for the gift of relationship. Continue to call us together by the power of your spirit so that we would be united in love and care for each other in all circumstances. May our lives together be a holy image of your love for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your church at work in this world. We ask your blessings on our partners in Maya Itza and Guatemala City, Guatemala. We especially ask that you would bless our partners in Nianzwa, Tanzania, as they face ongoing drought. Together, may we all know the joys of living in caring relationship with each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your mission lived out here at Easter Lutheran Church. As we plan for a new worship schedule and fall programming, grant us wisdom and joy. As we continue to work with our ministry partners, including The Open Door and Fair for All, grant us generosity and compassion. As our vision board and call committee work to welcome new pastors into our midst, grant us hope and clear vision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for your many servants in the gospel. We thank you for the ministry of pastors Mary Sue and Gary Dreyer, who are with us this month. We thank you as well for the two interim pastors who will join us starting in September. Continue to guide and keep Pastor Sarah Funkhauser as she lives into her first call with the people of Luther Memorial in Seattle. Surround seminarian Amy Vigisa with your love and care as she continues her learning and ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, because we can come to your table trusting in your love and mercy for all people. Where we have lived in anger, fear, or selfishness, forgive us. Unite us as your people, bound together by your call, redeemed by your Son, confident in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for the work of healing in our lives and ask that it would be made known to all people, especially Kyle Peterson, Barbara Carlton, Kevin Kilgore, Roger Martin, Bev Tibbs, Kevin Lane, Jennifer Smith, Melinda Martin, Jody Taylor, Tom Foss, and Sue Sorodiak. Grant your wholeness and comfort to any who mourn, including Judy Gustafson, Tammy Peterson, Deb Stoll, Denise Tooley, and Paula Zylan. Surround the people of Eastern Kentucky with your protection and comfort as they rebuild from floods, care for those affected, and grieve the deaths of their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this we ask of you, God, rejoicing in your grace and mercy for all people, united as a community of faith, praying boldly, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wherever you are, we come together today as one holy community gathered at our Lord's table. And so we hear the promise that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks 
broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. As you take or share the bread today, remember that you say, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take or share your wine or juice, we say, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Wherever you are, remember and trust that these are indeed the gifts of God for the people of God. All is ready and all are welcome. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>